Welcome back folks. It's time to have a look at a new powder. This is Winchester Stable 6.5. This powder was just announced last week, so it's still kind of slowly making its way out onto the market. Powder Valley was the first place I saw that had it in stock. I was able to pick up two pounds, but now I see it's, it's available at Mid-South Shooter Supply as well. So it's making its way out into the market. Now this powder is fascinating because Winchester claims that it is the world's first temperature stable ball powder. What? That's right, a temp stable ball powder. They've done the impossible. And to be honest, I have my doubts. So that's what we're gonna to do today. We're gonna to try and work up a test to see if this stuff is indeed temperature insensitive or temperature stable. Now, the reason it's called Stayball 6.5 is that it's really a perfect powder for 6.5 Creedmoor. It's gonna land on the burn rate chart around others like H414, H380, CFE223, Alliant Power Pro 2000 MR. If you're using one of these ball powders, then the Stayball 6.5 is probably going to work for you. Hodgson has a full complement of, of load data on their website. So see if any of this sounds interesting to you. Apparently it's good for heavy bullets in 223. They've got load data for, you know, 77 up to 90 grain bullets. So we'll eventually try this out in our Mark 262 cloning series where we try and get that 77 grain Sierra Match King going as fast as we can. We might not be able to get quite enough in the case to hit the numbers we're looking for, but if you've got a rig that shoots like the 90 grain bullets in 223, this is gonna be really good stuff. They've got data for 224 Valkyrie, 22 Nosler, 22250, which I'm about to get into here in the next couple weeks. They've got data for 30-06. They don't have any data for 6.5 6 Grendel, but I'm curious how it might work in that cartridge. We might eventually uh, mess around with it a little bit with that. And in the vast majority of the load data, this powder is one of the highest velocity powders. So this stuff, it's just gonna be downright useful for me. So if this stuff truly is temperature stable, it's gonna be one of my favorite powders, I can already tell you. It just, it's perfect for a lot of the stuff I like to do. So let's get on to the testing. What I decided to do was to load up four different powders, 10 rounds with each one. I wanna shoot five of them cold and five of them hot. And let's compare the velocity swing between these four powders. Now, H4350, the legend, exceptional temperature stability is what everybody says, right? This stuff wins a ton of matches and it, it's pretty much the default powder for 6.5 Creedmoor. So this is gonna be kind of our control. I expect to see outstanding numbers with this powder. Next to it is Reloader 17. It's a little bit slower burning than uh, H4350. With most of, the, most of the Creedmoor stuff, you can get a little bit more velocity out of Reloader 17 than you can with H4350. But the problem is that it is not temperature stable. Everyone says it's terrible. And that's one of the reasons why Alliant came out with Reloader 16. Reloader 16 should really be called like Reloader 16.9. Like it's just a little bit faster burning than Reloader 17. It's a lot, you know, like H4350 but you can see right here on the bottle, consistent across temperature extremes. So I'm interested to see how Reloader 17 performs in this test. The third powder, of course, is the star of the show, our Stayball 6.5, and the last powder is another ball powder, Hodgson H414. This is just, it's an old school ball powder, like it's been on the market for 5,000 years or something. So I expect very poor results from H414. Now, just in general, I've never done any temperature stability tests at all. I've always wanted to, you know, work up some sort of test protocol where I could reliably test powders. So what I know about temperature sensitivity just comes from what people say on the internet and what's written in some reloading manuals. Now, my understanding was the worst of the worst is a ball powder, right? So something like Hodgson H414 or any of those others I had on the table, like H380 or CFE223, like th these are just the worst. And that a powder like Reloader 17, where people complain about it being sensitive, it's still not as bad as ball powders. That's always been my understanding. So going into this, my thought is that if Stayball 6.5 is even as good as a poor extruded powder like Reloader 17, it's still a win. Still a lot better than you know what we've been working with up to this point. I guess I didn't really talk about the powder itself. It looks like any other ball powder. It's just a you know standard little spherical ball powder. Not much else to say there. All right, so to test these four powders, I pulled out some 140 grain 
Hornady match Boattail hollow points. These are good bullets. They've all shot well in my gun, but we're not concerned whatsoever with accuracy today. We'll get to that later today. It's all about velocity changes with temperature. I loaded them into Peterson brass, the primers. Forgot to pull those out. Our CCI number 41 primers. We are using, you know, a small primer in the Peterson brass, but our previous testing has shown that these are able to light the, the most difficult to ignite ball powders. So don't expect any ignition issues or anything like that giving us headaches. Uh, let's see, here's, here's some load data. I just pulled these loads out of my butt. Like I just looked at a couple data sources, Hodgton, the Sierra manual, the Hornady manual, you know, looked through several manuals and I tried to pick out a charge weight that was about, you know, a, a, a grain, grain and a half of powder below max. Certainly don't want to push it when we're going to be, you know, heating up these rounds really hot and shooting them, especially something like uh, Hodgson H414. We could see the velocity and pressures get out of control. So I, I wanted to, you know, wanted to back it off a little bit and shoot something reasonable, which is how I came up with what you see there. 2.8 inch overall length. So let's do it. I'm not going to show any loading. We're just going to get right down to it. The range portion of this video will be really short. I'm not going to show you every shot. I just want to go out and show you the setup I came up with to heat up and cool down the rounds and try and control temperature and all of that garbage. So let's head to the range. All right, so let's go over the test setup. You can see I've got two coolers here. The first one's just full of ice water, which you're not really going to be able to see, but it's just ice water and rounds in a Ziploc bag. So that should be more or less uh, 32 degrees. The hot side, on the other hand, if we open this guy up, under this towel, I've got a heating pad, just like, you know, you'd buy at the drugstore. And it's folded over with all of our ammo in between. You can also see this silver probe in there. I'm using that to read the temperature on this guy right here. This is my PID controller. You can see it's reading 130 degrees, but that probe reads about 10 degrees hot. So in reality, this is about 120 degrees. So we've got about 32 on the cold side and about 120 on the hot side, a little less than a 90 degree temperature differential. Hopefully that'll be enough for us to see what's going on. All right, I think we're ready to get started. Our gun is a Thompson Center Compass chambered in 6.5 Creedmoor. It's in an Oryx chassis and I'm shooting with a Silencer Co. Omega suppressor. We're gonna get velocity with the lab radar and that's pretty much it. I'm gonna start out with the, with the hot rounds and I'm worried about the temperature dropping on them you know, every time I open the, the cooler to get the next one, I'm worried about, you know, things cooling down. So what I want to do, just in case, like, they start cooling off or something, I want to shoot them round robin. So I'm going to shoot one of each powder and then circle back and start all over again and see how that goes. One problem here I've got with this uh, Oryx chassis with the AI magazines, it's really hard to single feed. I'm still new to this Oryx chassis, so it's going to take me a little while to get used to that. I think what I'm actually going to do is pop the magazine out, put the round in, and go ahead and uh, magazine feed them. I think that'll be faster because I really want to minimize the amount of time they're out of the cooler. All right, so the gun's already warmed up. I shot a few rounds through it just to, I don't know, get it up to temp. All right, let's get started. We're starting out with the Stayball 6.5, which is the green round. So I'm going into the hot cooler to get a green round as quickly as I possibly can. All right, there's our green one. There's the magazine in. Oh crap, I forgot to arm the damn chronograph. God dang it. All right, there we go. Okay, first velocity, 2615. Okay, the next one is going to be H414. So that's an orange one. There is an orange one. Close the cooler. Put it in the magazine. Okay, 2600. Okay, next is H4350. That's going to be a blue one. Into the magazine, into the chamber. And 25. 91. And last up is Reloader 17. Okay, there it goes. Into the chamber. And 
27-19. All right, good. Made it through that first round pretty good. So that's about it. Hopefully you, you kind of get the procedure. I'm going to go through this with all the hot ones. I'm going to go through this with all the cold ones. And nothing interesting is going to happen until we have all the data. So I'll just meet you guys back at the bench. All right, folks, these results are fascinating. Let's start out with a visual look at a chart. These are the averages of, you know, I did five shots hot and five shots cold with each powder, and these are the average numbers. So Stable 6.5 went from 26.14 when hot down to 25.47. That is a change of 67 feet per second. H414 was awful, like it was worse than I was expecting. 25.81 hot and 24.58 cold for a difference of 124 feet per second. H4350 was outstanding, just like we expected. Hot was 2568, cold was 2553 for a difference of only 15 feet per second. That's just incredible, like really incredible. Reloader 17 was worse than I expected. Hot was 2711, cold was 2607. Now, now the differences in velocities between the powders doesn't matter. Hopefully that makes sense to you. I just pulled out a random charge. I had no idea what the velocity was going to be and it doesn't matter whatsoever. We're looking for that gap from the blue up to the red. How big is it? So reloader 17 at 104 feet per second of, of, of velocity swing was almost as bad as H414. It was 20 feet per second better. Not awesome. So I wanna show you another chart that plots all of the shots, the individual shots, just to show you the, there weren't any crazy outliers or anything skewing the numbers. These were like some of the standard deviation numbers were pretty crappy. And strangely enough, H4350 was one that on the hot test, it had a standard deviation of 23.6 and H414 was 23.3. So there were definitely some loads that, you know, weren't exactly shooting tight velocity numbers, but I don't think it invalidated the test in any way like this. This chart here kind of tells the story, or at least it does to me, that I, I don't think there were any one-offs or bad shots that, you know, skewed things very much. Now, one really cool thing about the Stayball 6.5, it had, it had some of the very best standard deviation numbers. The hot rounds, it was uh, 10.7 with a 27 feet per second uh, extreme spread. And the cold rounds, it was a 4.9 standard deviation with 11 feet per second of extreme spread. So hopefully that's a trend. Like hopefully we'll find that this is a powder that likes to shoot consistent velocities and give us good SD numbers. So I guess that's, you know, pretty much it. Like I guess in our rankings here, Stayball 6.5 beat both Reloader 17 and H414. That is outstanding. It had half the velocity swing that H414 did and it was almost 40 feet per second better than Reloader 17. So like I said at the beginning of this video, I think even if it performed kind of like Reloader 17, I would still kind of consider this a win. So I am more excited now than I was before. I want to try it out, see how it shoots. Hopefully those tight standard deviation numbers are common. And I also, you know, I, I feel good about this test, you know, protocol with the ice water and the heating pad. I, I need to get a better cooler or something to where I can more easily, you know, get to the hot rounds without losing heat out of the cooler. Like it wasn't bad, but my temperature reading dropped, you know, 10 to 15 degrees or so, or I think it was about 10 over the, you know, the span of the testing as I was opening that stupid cooler to pull rounds out. Now these sat in those coolers for about eight hours before I tested. Like I wanted to really make sure that there was plenty of time for that heat and that cold to get in all the way through the cartridge, all the powder would be the same temperature. So I think a little bit, you know, losing a little bit of heat probably didn't make much effect, but I want to test every powder I've got now in that same sort of protocol, because like I said, H4350 is, is exceptional. So I'm not ready to say that, you know, because Stayball 65 wasn't able to keep up with H4350, then it's garbage. No, like we might find that there's a lot of other extruded temperature sensitive powders that aren't able to keep up with the performance of H4350. I just got to do more testing to find out. And even if it does, you know, in the long run prove to lag behind some of the 
really good temperature stable powders like Reloader 16, AR Comp, Varget, Reloader 23. Like, you know, there are some out there that that's their main selling point is that they're temperature insensitive. So we're just gonna have to do more testing. And I think I'd, you know, I'll rerun the test with Stable 65 as well. Make sure the, you know, numbers match up. We're getting repeat repeatable results, that sort of deal. Let me know what you think. Did you see a flaw in my test plan or my test methodology? Any feedback is appreciated. So I think that's where we'll leave this folks. Lots more to come with Stable 65. Like I said, got two pounds of it to burn and we're gonna do so across all of the cartridges that it's good for. And that's another, like I've heard case fill can have an effect and different, you know, different cartridge sizes and designs can behave, you know, powders can behave differently in different cartridge designs or different load densities and things like that. So maybe in an upcoming video, we'll test this stuff for temp stability in a bunch of different stuff and see if it performs about the same in everything. You get the idea. Lots more to come. That's it for now. I appreciate you guys joining me. I'll see you next time.